Hey guys, it's Christian and today I'm going to show you a nice, free and open source web UI for managing Docker Compose projects in your home lab. It's called Docch and created by the same guy who already made Uptime Kuma, which is, by the way, also a great application that we love to use in a home lab. And Docch is no different, it's really amazing. You can use it to deploy new Compose projects, manage existing ones or troubleshooting by getting quick access to container shells and logs. If you are into home labs and containers, you're just gonna love it, so let's get right into it. If you want to get started with Docch and install it on your home server, I will leave you a link to the public GitHub repository in the description down below. So there you will find all the necessary information about this project. And one thing I have to say, I just love the documentation. It's very simple and straightforward. You will find all the necessary instructions, but also some features, videos and requirements, basic commands, how you deploy this on your server. And one thing I probably need to highlight, they have an interactive compose file generator available here. So you even don't need to write a compose file yourself if you want to install that. You can just use their web UI to generate a file. And let me just walk you through the basic installation and setup process of Docch on a home server so you can easily get started. And we will just use this uh, compose file generator here. The first thing that you probably should customize here is the stacks directory. And the stacks directory is basically just the directory on your server where you are storing all your Docker Compose projects. By default, they have the opt stacks directory in here. So opt is in the Linux file system allocation for third party applications. In the past, I've also yeah, put my Docker Compose projects in that directory, but for most of the time now, I'm just using my personal home folder, but it's completely up to you where you define this stacks directory. You just need to be careful that you don't set a relative path to this directory, as they mentioned here in the documentation. They only support a full path, and of course, you must have the right privileges and permissions to access all the directory or project directories in that folder here. So for example, in my case, I'm just switching that to my uh, personal home folder because this is where I usually store all my compose file projects and then you could also customize the port so how you're going to access the web UI of Docch. In my case the 5001 is fine so I still have that available on my server so it's it's okay and then you simply can just copy this file here upload it to your server and deploy this compose project. One thing that is pretty clever you can also just use the commands uh, here down below so these you of course need to execute on your remote server so let's open a terminal and create a new project directory for the Docch project. So I'm just calling this Docch temp1 because I already deployed Docch on this server here and cd into that directory. So now we can just use this curl command here. So that will download the compose.yaml file that you have generated in the UI to your remote server. And then you should see your compose file in that current folder. Let's start this container with the docker compose up dash d command and let's check if the container is running you can see everything is correct the container is up and healthy so we can now try to access the web ui just do that by opening a new browser window and as an address type in the ip address or the dns name of your server where you have deployed Docch. so in my case this is the server demo one on the port 5001 so let's hit enter and then you just need to create an admin account so i'm just typing my username typing in my password click on create and then we are directly logged in to the Docch web ui if you have already worked with Uptime Kuma, you can definitely see the similarities in the design language and the UI. The developer is basically just using the same layout. And as Uptime Kuma, this also looks very clean and very functional. So in the main screen, you can see all the active containers, the stopped ones and the inactive projects as well. On the left side, you have a menu with all your existing projects. So if you are creating project folders with Docker Compose files inside the directory where you have configured the stacks, this will automatically scan and watch all the existing projects and you can just click on them and edit them. This is one thing that I absolutely love. And to be honest, this annoys me so much in other tools like Portana, for example, where you can see the existing Docker Compose projects, but if you haven't created them in the tool itself, you can't really manage them. You can just see them. And in Docch, this is absolutely possible. So this is really amazing. 
You could also just convert any Docker command to a compose file. So for example, if you want to deploy a Docker container that gives you some instructions to run in a terminal, you can simply just copy it, paste it in the Docker run and convert it into a new compose project. And of course, directly save and deploy this as a new project managed in Docker. So this is really amazing. And I think this is so useful for so many tutorials where you just get a plain Docker run command and you can easily convert this into a managed project. And then you, of course, can edit the existing project. You can restart the container. You can update it. So this will automatically pull down the latest version of the Docker image and restart the containers. You can stop it. You can even take the project down and you can also delete it. So be careful doing this because deleting will delete the entire project directory. So when you're using persistent mount points to mount the data from the host into the containers file system and you have stored them inside the project directory deleting will also delete those files so be careful and what is also nice you can on the right side you see the docker compose yaml file so in that active project directory and you can just go in here and edit it so when you need to change anything in here you can just type it you of course need to first click on edit here <laughs> and then you can just yeah modify this compose file directly in the web ui change values update the image version for example so if version 0.25 comes out you can just type it here and deploy this and update the container project you can also see all the logs directly in this terminal window here. This is also nice and you can open a bash or a terminal inside the running containers uh, shell. Sometimes you need to click on switch to sh. So this is a case when the containers image doesn't have a bash uh, executable installed and then you can just execute any command inside the running container. This is so damn useful. What is also pretty clever, they added a feature to easily integrate and manage environment variables and existing networks in Compose files, as well as a graphical editor for all the projects. So for example, when I go into the Cloudflare Tunnels demo project, this is an inactive project that is currently not running. And you can see in the terminal, I got an error that the tunnel token variable is not set. So this is because in the Compose file, I'm using an environment variable because yeah, I never really store any secrets or credentials inside Compose project files. But what you could do is, let's edit this in Docs. So Docs gives you the ability to easily manage secrets in a .env file. So this is an environment variable file. If I want to manage this here in the file, I could just use this environment variable, type in an equal to set the value, paste in the secret token, and then when I deploy and start the container, it always checks if the .env file is existing in the project directory and passes the value for those environment variables into the running container. And just like that, you can of course also create and manage new Compose projects in Docs. So let us just do that and deploy a simple web stack with an Nginx web server and a database, for example, to easily show you how straightforward it is. So just click on the plus Compose icon and then just give it a name. So for example, web stack temporary one. And as you can see, it automatically starts with an Nginx container from the Nginx latest image. So that's totally fine. We're just going to keep that for our web stack. But um, if you want to add a new container to this project, you can easily do this. For example, I'm going to deploy a new MariaDB container. And then you can easily just manage those two services or containers separately in the web UI. First, I'm going to start with customizing the MariaDB container. Let's add the MariaDB latest image image to that and expose it on the port 8306, for example. Of course, this is not the port that the MySQL or MariaDB database server is using internally. So inside the container, it's using the port 3306, of course. And I also want to store the data for this container persistently. As far as I know, uh, you can't really use any named volumes in here. So it's just using mount points that are stored inside the project's directory. So you can easily just give it a name, something like MariaDB data and mount this into the containers in the path var lib mysql. And you could also customize restart policy here. I think that's totally fine, but I'm going to need a new environment variable for the root password of the database.
So I can easily just manage this in the .env file. So let's just give this a password, something like test test, for example. So that should be fine. And I can also add this container to an existing Docker network. So for example, let's just use the backend network here and add this container to that network. Okay, so I think that should all be fine. Let's go and edit some settings here for the Nginx server as well, because maybe I want to expose this on a different port. By default, it's using 8080. I think that's fine for test. But of course, I want to host a website on this web server. So I'm just going to mount an existing or a folder on the host's uh, file system, for example, Nginx data inside the var. Uh, no, it's I think it's user share Nginx html if i'm correct so <laughs> let's see if that works and i also want to add this uh, container to the back end network but i'm also going to add it to the front end network to connect it with other containers that may be located in that here so let's add the front end network in here as well and i think yeah maybe we also add a container dependency so that might be useful that you only maybe want to start the nginx web server when the database server is running because you are using that for wordpress or anything like this so i'm just going to to use container dependency to the MariaDB service here on the Nginx server. Okay, great. So I think that should be all okay. So you can directly deploy this or first save and then deploy it. So now the containers have been created and started. So you can see directly in the terminal logs if everything was okay. I think that's good. Let's try to access the Nginx web server on the port 8080. And as you can see, yep, the server is running. It's showing us forbidden because I haven't really uploaded a web page to this uh, container yet. So when you go onto your remote server and uh, check your stacks directory, Dogch has already created a new project directory for this web stack. So we can easily just go in here, check all the files. And as you can see, there is a new folder called nginx data so let's go in here and this is where you can upload your website for example for a simple test i'm just creating a new index.html just as a simple hello world web page of course you can upload any real web page in here that you like let's save and refresh the web server and yep as you can see it's now showing our web page Okay, so I think Dogge is a really cool Compose file manager for home lab people and mostly created for beginners. But this is not meant to sound negative because in a home lab, we are mostly beginners and we also have beginner needs. However, there are of course a few things that I just like to see in the future. For example, manage named volumes correctly in the Dogge web UI or maybe an agent server model would be incredible. I know most people are just totally fine with the current design of deploying Dogge on one single home server, but I think it would be um, pretty amazing to have something like a centralized Dodge server that is also able to manage Compose projects on remote servers. And that would be a pretty hard competition for Potena, at least in a home lab or in a small, yeah, uh, self-hosted environment. But anyway, I think the current design is totally fine for most simple workloads. But yeah, now it's your turn. So please tell me what do you think about Dodge and will you use it in your home lab? Just leave me a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next videos. Take care. Bye bye.